and welcome to another another wonderful episode of Photoshop parties. I need to have like intro music and big banners flying all over the place and things like that. Well, what's holding you up, Mr. Photoshop? I'm too dang lazy. <laughs> You're bored. <laughs> Hang on, I got to send a link to somebody and they forgot to link in, of course. Mm. Okay. Ah, hi, Larry. Long time no see. Is he awake? <laughs> He's awake, right? His eyes are open. Okay. Lights are on the video background. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and get it started and we'll kick it up and have some fun with this and see what happens. Um, I'm going to show a couple different ways to make a mat for your background. Mel came up with an action already done where you just click on the action, choose your colors and go. Um, today we'll do some simple backgrounds all the way up to a little bit more complex matting and doing some really cool stuff with it. Um, I am not the inventor of most of these. One of them was Sherry Hammond out of Idaho, showed me how to do one. Um, Sandra sent um, some videos for me to look at, and I looked at those, and there's some cool, easy ways to do videos or to do backgrounds as well. So hopefully we will amaze well, I don't know about Mays, but at least you'll learn something today. So let me hit the share screen button, go into Photoshop, and now I am ready to rock and roll. Move this down, out of the way. And can everybody see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, good. This is Sierra, and I photographed her last Thursday and I was worried about the smoke and you can see we worked it out using a passport color checker and the color's not too bad a little warm especially in the background which is the way I like it so I'm happy minus that get that out of the way okay um, I'm gonna show you some really quick easy ways to make a, a matting for this a simple one uh, first thing we'll do is we are going to make a copy of this layer. So I'm going to hit Command or Control J and see what happens. And I got a copy. If, throw that in the garbage for a second, I'll show another way to do that. You take your background <coughs> layer and drag it to the plus sign right there, which is new. And that's the same thing. But for me, Command J is just so much faster. And I'm all about speed. It's Close that out of the way. And we're going to take this image and we're going to go to image canvas size. And I'm going to go, this is a eight by 10, so I'll add two inches all the way around um, with two inches, height two inches. And you see that I have relative clicked there. If I didn't have relative click there, hit reset, it shows eight by 10. If, if I didn't click that, I have to do the math. So I wanna add two inches, okay? Width is eight plus two is 10. Height is 10 plus two is 12. Just keep it simple and add two inches all the way around. You can pick your canvas extension color. Um, Let's go ahead and do that now. We'll just make it quick and easy. Um, click on the pretty box there, and I'm going to do a greenish color just to fill it in. So I'm picking from the tree in the background to get some green. That's a little too light, I think. I'll try that, see what happens. Click OK. And that was way too light, too. So what I can do is click on the background again. Go down to um, the fill layer 
and I'm going to fill with a solid color. Pick the color I want. So, and you can see as you pick the color you want, there we go, I like that, a little bit darker green. Um, it automatically shows up right away. Click OK. If I had it on top of the copy layer, I wouldn't be able to click and pick the colors that I want. That's why I move it down to the lower layer. Um, from here, click on the background copy. You can access this a couple ways. One is go down and hit FX, which is add a layer style, effects. Or you can double click off to the right where it says background copy, go off to the right a little bit, double click, and it brings up your layer styles. I'm gonna go to my stroke. And let's do a new color because black does not work for this. That's a little bit bright. Tone it down. There we go. Click OK. And something to show you here. You can see right now I have position inside. If I click outside, if I click outside, you can see the corners are rounded and it's on the outside of my eight by 10. If I click on center, they're slightly rounded. And what it does, it lines up halfway on the outside, halfway on the inside, and it's centered on the outside of that layer. So let's go to inside, nice sharp, take it down to, let's say five pixels and it's just enough to put a hint of a key line or a stroke there click ok um, you can also if you like let me bring that back up big again you can bring the opacity down of your key line as well hmm. so you can do that there in fact that's probably where you want to do it is right there so let's go back to five again and depending on the size of your image you can go anywhere to seven or eight if it's a huge image like 16 by 20 at 300 an eight pixel stroke is going to look similar to this if you're at eight by ten at 200 a five pixel stroke is going to be too big um, they say four to six is the max so that's what you want to do. So click OK. And there I have a very quick mat for this girl. Quick and easy. So let me move my cat off of my notes because he decided he wants to sit on my notes now. Jump down. Thank you very much. And we're going to go to a different style of matting. Don't save. Go here and let's do the comet picture. So let's go. Let somebody in who's been waiting. Okay. This image right now is 12 by 8. So we're going to have to do kind of the same thing. Let's go to image, canvas size, and I'm going to add 2.5 inches, 2.5 inches. And that's about the right size. I didn't change the color. And I also didn't make a copy of the background. So let's command Z because I screwed that one up big time. Command J to make a copy of the background and put it on its own layer. Let's go ahead and do canvas size again. 2.5 worked pretty. I liked it. 2.5 canvas extension color. Let's go ahead and pick. Um, I don't know what color that is, but we'll find out. Yeah, it's not too bad. Ugly, but not too bad. Okay, what I want to do now is I'm going to 
take the marquee tool and make a selection on the background layer. So I want to make sure I'm on my background layer. M for marquee. Make sure you're on the rectangular marquee, not the circular or elliptical. And I screwed that up already. Wow, I'm doing really bad today. Let's go ahead and add some guides. So we'll go to view, new guide, horizontal, and let's go one inch and see how that looks. Perfect. And new guide. We want to go one inch from the bottom, so. Are you making a key line? Is that what you're doing? Um, I'm, I'm going to be making actually like an inner bevel and a drop shadow on this. Okay. So let's see if we can make it semi-close. That's semi-close. I'm not going to make it exact. You can do exact me measurements on here. There we go. Okay, what I'm going to do is, now that I'm on my background layer, I'm going to hit the marquee tool, make a selection that's a little wider than the image, and then I'm going to invert the selection so the outside is selected. So Command-Shift-I to invert the selection, or you can go to Select Inverse. Command-Shift-I is just so much quicker. Um, you're good to go. Make sure you're on your background layer when you do this. You hit Command J to make a copy of that. And what you've just done is made a mat for the outside. And to show the mat, all I did was Alt or Option click on the eyeball right here, which brought up only that layer. Okay. We're going to double click on the mat layer and I'm going to go to bevel and emboss and I'm going to click on inner bevel. We're going to have it at smooth. Depth is going to be 275. Drag it up to drag it back and forth, back and forth till you find it or just go 275. Type it in. The size is going to go to 18. Soften is going to be at 2. Then we go down to shadow mode, which is going to be set at multiply, opacity 25%. Double click, type in 25. And opacity here is going to be 25%. Whoops. 25% there. So what we have is bevel and emboss, inner bevel, smooth, depth 275, direction up, size 18, soften two pixels, come down here, screen, opacity is 25%, shadow mode is 25% at multiply, and we're ready to click OK, or we can go on to the next step, which is adding our drop shadow, because you can do both of these now. So let's click on drop shadow, and drop shadow, we're going to change the distance to five. So distance is five. Where's that? Oh, there it is. Under drop shadow. Oh, I see it. I'm okay. Sorry. That's okay. Size 103. Is the default multiply? I believe the default is multiply. Okay. 
And if I haven't mentioned anything, I leave it at the default settings. Okay. Um, spread, I've left at zero, so it's a default. Size is 103. Not 104, not 102, but 103. And if you get 102 or 104, then yeah, we're fine. And we click, okay, has everybody got those settings there? Mm -hmm. Going once, going twice, gone. Okay, and I'm gonna get rid of my guides now. So we go to view, click on extras, we get rid of them. And you can see a different kind of mat there. So that was that mat. Cool. Really easy to make, isn't it? Yeah, it looks awesome. If you know the steps. So luckily this is going to be recorded or is being recorded. So you can do a review of it and do it again. And then Thursday we'll make actions and walk through the steps for each action, how to make them so you can do these. So any questions on that one? Do it again. Okay. Oh, <laughs> no, that was an echo there. I'm not the only one saying it. Okay. Is there a way to make the uh, inner bevel a perfect square instead of kind of a curve? I do not know. When we do it this time, we'll find out. Okay. We're going to start from the beginning again. And again, we're going to man J, which gives us a new layer go up to image, canvas size, and I put 2.5 on that one, correct? Yes. 2.5, and the color I'm gonna leave like it was because that worked. Now we're gonna change it. We're gonna add a little bit more blue to it. There we go. Click OK, and my cat just jumped in my Notes again, thank you, Gizmo. Okay, we've got that layer done. Just that easy. Now we need to set, we could take the marquee tool and just try and set it up so it's around there and semi as close. Um, I like, personally setting up guides to make it easy to work with. And to make a guide, all you have to do is drag from the ruler, make sure your rulers are on, command or control R turns on your rulers, and just drag your guide down. And your marquee will stick to the um, guides. So we have this, make sure I'm on my background layer. This is important, you have to be on your background layer Command Shift I to invert my selection. I'm going to get rid of this. Really? I think he's jealous. Okay. We inverted our selection so that the outside is selected. Make sure you're on your background layer. Hit Command J. And what that did was make the map for you. From this point, click on layer one, which is the actual image. Let's title it image. And you can either go to FX for all your blending options or layer styles or double click on the layer. We're gonna go to bevel and emboss. We're gonna do inner bevel, and it looks like it saved my last settings. Which it did. Let's look at technique chisel hard. See how that looks. Go to drop shadow, same technique. Do you need the numbers again, or just the showing how to do it? I'm just writing down what they go to, because I wrote them all Numbers, down. please. Numbers, please. Okay, bevel and emboss. We're going to go to inner bevel. 
or here, what you could do is just take a screenshot of that. Inner bevel, the way it was showed to me is smooth. Depth, 275%, direction up. If I moved it to down, it changes it drastically. So let's keep it up. Size, 18. Soften, 2. Shading, multiply at 25%. Screen highlight mode, you don't need to worry about because we're not doing that. But it does kind of bring up the side a little bit on the right-hand side as I adjust it. Okay, we have those numbers? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, go to drop shadow. Thank you, sir. You are welcome. Drop shadow. Basically go with the default settings except for distance goes to five pixels. And size goes to 103. Everything else is pretty much default. We're good? Good. Click OK and you have that. So there's your image and you've got your bevel and everything. Let's go ahead and change it from chisel hard. Click OK. This one's a lot smaller, huh? A little bit, but it gives you that nice hard look mm. like you're cutting a mat. Let's go ahead and change from chisel hard to chisel soft. And it didn't look like it did anything. Did you hit okay? Don't need to, it should show you what it's doing. It's on preview. Oh. You can see smooth, gives you that yeah. softer look. Chisel hard makes it look more like a cut bevel from a mat. Notice though some of the stars are showing through. I noticed that. Do that again? Or enlarge it, sorry. Let me go bigger. Uh, Command plus. Hold my space bar to move it. You can oh. see the stars right here. Well, that's funky. Is that because of your opacity? The no, background I, landscape is showing through also. Yeah, it's, th it's showing through. So let's go ahead and highlight mode. We'll take that, turn it off. That didn't do the trick. Yeah, I don't know why those are showing through, but they are. Hmm. And other, other side, it's showing the color. Well, also on the bottom down here, you can see the color changing down oh, here. Oh, yeah, that's weird. Oh, that's funky. Yeah, it's really funky. Does it have anything to do with using global light? Um, I really couldn't tell you. I don't think so, because what global light does, it keeps everything, keeps the light coming in the same way. So if I click on bevel and emboss and have global light set at 30 degrees, when I go to drop shadow, global light's gonna be set at 30 degrees. So everything okay. is set to 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. So that when you're doing your images, your lighting is matching up on all the effects that you do. Okay, and what does layer knocks out drop shadow beam? What? It's down close to the bottom, keep going a little farther down. Layer knocks out drop shadow. I don't know what it does. It doesn't appear to be doing anything. Wait, hover there, it says what it does. It said, used to obscure the shadow when the fill is transparent. Okay. But it doesn't appear to have any effect on the image itself when I'm doing that. Okay. So it, I think it did on the, look, go to the left-hand side. Let's look at this first. As I turn it off, nothing's happening. So let's go to the left-hand side. Mm. It looked as though the edge got softer. 
If you're looking at the top of where you have it blown up, something's changing. I could see something changing over there. I don't know what. I don't see what is changing. So I don't know. Okay. I'll be the first to tell you. I don't know. I don't know neither. That it makes be in the bevel emboss setting. That's in the drop shadow settings. So if, if I click on drop shadow, you can see it's in the, I'm on drop shadow right now. And it says layer knocks out drop shadow down at the bottom down here. So Mike, if you're looking at your picture and then you have your border and there's the, the edge that you have there, but on the inside of that, it's that like really faint darker blue. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know where you're talking about. Around the whole picture, there's a there's a darker blue around the outside of the picture. Like, yeah. On the inside of where you have your your on the inside mat. of the mat. Yes, that changes when you move it. Huh. When you, I think this is a uh, zoom problem. Well, I wonder if it's a blend mode too. You got multiply. If you had normal, maybe would it be different? That's what I'm thinking. Did you have a blend mode issue possibly there? Nope. So, well, if you zoom in, I mean. Try changing the blend mode on the bevel and emboss because one of it is uh, multiply on this. Yeah, somewhere it's doing something funky with the effects. Mm -hmm. well, I don't see any stars Cancel. coming through now, but they were. I think they were on the other side. Yeah, it's got a murky. Blue it's, it's, the that's coming out of the um, that one line on the inside right here is coming out of bevel and emboss, and then the drop shadow is coming out of this shading right here is coming out of drop shadow. But it's murky looking. Yeah, it just it shadows up, mm. and I don't know why bevel and emboss is doing that. Let's try. I like the other one better. <laughs> Yeah, that's weird. Okay, let me show you some other ones. I think you'll like these too. So don't save and let's go get a picture. And let's start with the flowers. Open, 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 open. Where's that? That is in beautiful downtown Lompoc. Oh, yeah, pretty. Which we have very, very few flower fields anymore. We used to be the Valley of the Flowers. Mm -hmm. We're now the Valley of Flowers and Arts, and it's more wine than flowers. So, what did I just do? Um, I'm going to crop this to 20 by 12 at 200, just to kind of get rid of the stuff in the front. And now I have an image. Beautiful shot. Thank you. I saw the clouds out there and rushed out to the flower fields hoping I could get something. And yeah. It came out cool. Okay, so you guys know the routine. It's the same as before. Command J on the background, and we're going to make a background layer. So we have two layers. And we're going to add size to the, to the sides. So what we could do is go to image, canvas size, and pick a number between one and four. Four. Three. Top. <laughs> Let's try four, see what it looks like. I like three, that looked good. Image, canvas size, four, four, click OK. Yeah, that'll work. We can do that. And 
personally, I do not like the color that is there. It's mm -hmm. too dark of a mat. So I'm going to click on background and I'm going to go to my color, solid color adjustment layer. And I'm going to pick out a color. I want to be able to see what we're doing. So I'm going to go a little bit lighter than what I normally should. I'm going to click OK, get rid of the cropping tool. So you went to FX to do solid color? No, I went to um, add a new fill or adjustment layer. It looks like oh. the yin and yang. Right. So let me, I'll go back through and do it again. Whoops. Oopsies. History, canvas size, so we don't lose that. In the layers panel, down at the bottom, yin and yang. Mm -hmm. The very first one is solid color. Oh, okay. So I hit solid color, and I don't know why it gave me that ugly brown again, because that's not what I used last time. And click OK. Whew. You're killing me, Smalls. Okay. Now that we got that done, I want to add a stroke around my layer one, which is the image. So let's say flowers. And I want to add a stroke. So I can go to FX, effects, or double click on the layer there and brings up my layer style. We're going to go to stroke. Click on stroke and it has a beautiful, beautiful brown stroke. So let's go ahead and pick out a new color. And we'll go with the light blue, see how that works with five pixels. Four pixels. That's 54. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I Kind of, kind of yeah. saw that. Thank you very much for pointing out how stupid You're I very sound. Welcome, Mikey. <laughs> You're so sweet. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, anywhere from three to five pixels make it look good. You can, you can always change after you've done it. You look at it and go, "Wow, that's like a little bit too off." So let's double click on stroke, and I'm going to change the stroke color to black, which is totally barfy ugly. <laughs> Make it three pixels, two pixels, there you go. Two pixel stroke, and you can still see it. It makes it stand out. And of course, with my stroke, again, I did the inside stroke, 100% opacity, fill type color, and you can pick the color that you want. this point, I'm going, you know what would be really cool? If we had a texture on this background. Mm. So let me go to bridge. I'm going to unshare my screen and just show desktop for now. Bridge is showing up. Can you guys see bridge? Yes. Good. I'm going to right click on brushed sky. So right click, go down to place in Photoshop. Before I do that, I wanna make sure I don't make a mistake. And I would have made a mistake. I wanna put that um, image on top of color fill, not on top of the flowers. Oh, so you selected the wrong one. So I wanted to make sure that I got the right layer selected. Now when I click on place in Photoshop, command T and we'll make it bigger. Click OK. Had I done it the other way, it would have shown up with my flowers underneath and that's what I would have seen. And that's not what I wanted. I'm gonna change the uh, blend mode on my layer from normal. Normally I'll go to overlay or soft light. And in this particular case, I think I like soft light better. Opacity, yeah, let's take it down to say 60%.
And the shortcut for doing that, as long as you're not in a brush, you hit six and your opacity goes down to 60. Mm. If you hit five, opacity go down to 50. And I think I like the opacity there at 50%. I think that looks kind of pretty. Got a little texture in there. Everything's going good. Oh. Okay, back to my flower layer. I'm going to add an outer glow. So go back to effects, find outer glow, which is nowhere near inner glow. Inner glow is here. I don't want that. Outer glow is way down here. That's the one I want. And outer glow seems to be good at that. And my setting is blend, no, blend mode normal, opacity 41%, noise zero. And all the others are just um, size is one that you have to deal with as well. Size, you can make your glow bigger or smaller. Let's do it at about 100. And there you have a different look. That's cool. That's a cool look. I like that. Yeah. So that is something that's easy to do. Let me go back, hit, bring that back, go history, open, go to actions, frame with the shadow, click OK. Add canvas size, yes. Color fill, we're gonna pick the color we want. So let's go there, click OK. Stroke, that's the same thing we left with. So let's take our stroke down to three pixels. Click OK, and it has the layer style. You can make it bigger or smaller. Let's make it smaller. There we go, click OK. And we have an action that runs and does all the work for you. Hmm. Yes, I love things that do the work for me. Where does it, do you have, don't you have to stop it to choose the color? Ah, that's what we're gonna show you on Thursday. When we make this, we're gonna show you how to put the stops in to add the color. They're already in there for me. Um, when I wrote it this morning, I. Oh yeah, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. You don't actually write a stop. Um, in fact, let's go back to the beginning. Click open, go to action, layer via copy. So we'll click on that, canvas size. It brings it up for you. So if you wanna do, change it, you go six, six, and then click okay, whoa. That made it huge. Set layer to background. Make a fill layer. So we're doing a color fill. Pick the color we want. Let's go a lighter, just so it shows up better. Uh, select layer one. Set layer style to current layer. I want a stroke. We got the stroke three pixels, click OK, set layer style of current layer, adding our uh, outer glow, make it a little bit bigger, make it smaller, it just depends on what you want, and we're done. So you see these little boxes right here, those are actually kind of like a stop saying, pick what you want, then we'll go on. So once you click OK mm -hmm. on what you want, it keeps it going. So we're gonna cover that Thursday. We'll make a couple different mats um, just to make it easy for you. Mm -hmm. um, and walk through each step as we do it. So if you guys have questions, we'll be doing that. Were you thoroughly amazed? Beyond words. Amazed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. Keep moving, Mike. Keep moving. Nothing to see here. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> um, those are really simple strokes and things to do. 
let me show you the action that Mel sent. Um, let's see, go back to history, open, actions, image comp frame. We're not seeing anything. Oh, that's because I'm not sharing. That would do it. Um, let's go back to Zoom. Click share screen, Photoshop. Now you're seeing. Yes. Okay, what I did in history, I went back to open. So we're back at the very beginning again. And I'm going to go to my actions, image comp frame, click run. And it's going to give me some funky colors because what I have selected now is this brownish color and white. So let's see what happens. Boom. Eh, that's not too bad. The stroke color could be different, but that's okay. And that's a quick, a quick way to do it too. So thank you, Mel, for that one. Stop share. We're back to normal again. So Thursday, we're going to be doing making actions, putting in the conditionals where if it does this, you change this and make it easy for you, and you can write your own. Ira, are you out there? I am. Yes. Yes. Um, I started looking at the action that you wanted me to write. If you can, yes. We can do that. Oh, terrific. Maybe you'll show and share with everybody. Maybe you'll show us how to do it. <laughs> From your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> Notice how he flipped that on you really quick. Really quick. Well, That's after my... Thursday, he's going to be able to. That's Michael for you. What can I say? Yeah. Yeah, to see what he wrote inside the email he sent to me. Thank you very much. Well, <laughs> I think we all feel the same way about, about you. Uh, yeah, I know. That's the problem. Right. He takes okay. all contributions, by the way. Yes, I do, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any questions what we did today? No. I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, this is my social outing of the week, and it makes me excited to see smiling faces. And I really enjoy being around you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and we thank will, you, Mike. Good to we, see you. Can't wait for thank the you. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Let me turn off the recording.